Bible said, go and get your brother. Don't mess with your sister. Don't look around. That's how I used to pray. I usually pray now with my hands lifted up and my head lifted up because it's not that God is up there so much as God lifts me up. So may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, for you, you are our strength. You are our Redeemer. Amen. My, uh, my pastor, his name was Pastor Rose. I don't think he had a first name. <laughs> his Pastor Rose. He always prayed that prayer before he started to preach, so it kind of got stuck in me. Now, I have to tell you a couple things before we uh, read the scripture. Light. Yeah? Light. And, and... Jesus said that you can't put the light under a... And somebody has pointed out to me that this didn't fit. And they said to me, didn't you test that? <laughs> Doesn't fit. Now he's also then said, suggested, that I could buy a smaller bulb. Well, yes, I could. In fact, I have smaller bulbs. However, it is also possible, it's conceivable, is it not, that perhaps I purchased a bulb that this would not fit over. Because after all, oh, Jesus said, you can't put a basket or a piece of pottery over the light. Right? So that's why. and can only be thrown out of doors and stamped underfoot. You are the world's light. It is impossible to hide 
a town built on the top of a hill. People do not light a lamp and put it under a piece of pottery. <laughs> it doesn't fit. They put it on a lampstand and it gives light for everyone in the house. Let your light shine like that in the sight of you. Let them see the good things you do and praise your Father in heaven. This is the good news, the gospel of our Lord. Amen. See, one of the things that, um, that Jesus talked about was love. Yeah? Many always talk about love. But one of the things that we don't talk that much about was, is, is, uh, is how fiery Jesus was and how fiery Jesus is. Because Jesus is actually alive, yes? Yes. 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 So if he was fiery then, he is fiery now. Now, we've been taught to sing the songs, right? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to Him belong. They are weak, but He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Yes. said, someone caring about you. That's, that's what love is. And Charles said, love is the power to make someone feel invincible. In Genesis, she told me a story. She said that love is, is leaving chocolate or a cookie in the same place every day for someone to come by and take it, pick it up. Love is a gift. And you just keep giving. I like that story. Um, then, I, 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 I didn't write your name down right, so I'm really sorry. Cash, you know? Yeah. She said, it's emotion towards someone. Someone else said, love is a warm feeling. Someone else said, love is deep friendship. Take what he's got a poem for us. One of them. weeks ago after a confirmation camp which was here but not in Centennial Hall. It's called God's Love and it goes a little something like this. God's love is something you know. God's love is something not to be perished. God's love is something to be shared. God's love is something that we cherish. God's love is built within. God's love is something, something that the world needs. Yeah. Get in your face. 
Here's a salt story from some years ago. I remember a good friend of mine called me up and said, uh, Pastor Roy, I'd like to see you. Sure. I mean, I was always kind of trying to be available to people. So he said, yeah, I'd like to come over and see you. So he came by and he said, let's take a walk. And so we kind of walked around the outside of the church and kind of, you know, ended up uh, kind, of, kind of by a, a little forest and we sat down and we just got started talking. And I was having a good time. And, but then talked for about an hour of him telling me basically how I was screwing up. Hmm. He was saying that I was letting myself get so busy with the things that I had to do, and particularly on Sunday morning, that I was getting so busy just kind of taking care of the details that I wasn't paying attention to people. And it was his impression, his, his sense of that I was sort of blowing people off because I was doing the things that I felt like I needed. Well, I have to say that it wasn't particularly easy for me to hear. As I am guessing, it wasn't very easy for him to say to me. But I know that what he was saying to me wasn't for the purpose of hurting me, and it wasn't for the purpose of demolishing me. He was actually loving me, and he was loving our church, and he was loving the work that we were doing together in God's name. Love is salty. Love is salty. Sometimes love gets in your face and tells the hard truth. It fulfills the word that God inspired Paul to speak when he said, speak the truth in Love. Don't just speak the truth and wreck people's lives. Don't just speak the truth and break their hearts. Speak the truth in love. Because love is salt. Jesus did that. Jesus was that. Jesus is the truth. And he has a salty love. Love absolutely. Love unconditionally. He was ridiculously passionate about people. All people, all people, and that's what made his love fiery. Do you remember how he finished the Palm Sunday parade? You don't remember Palm Sunday? Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And say, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Everybody was waving their palms. Hosanna! Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. There were people who were just walking down the streets of Jerusalem and said, Oh, cool! And they just stood and kind of said, Hosanna, who is it? Oh, Jesus. Yeah, sure, that's fine. They sang their songs in the street of Jerusalem, and then Jesus went to the temple. Remember the rest of the story? selling cattle, sheep, and pigeons, and also the money changers sitting at their table.
His disciples remembered that the scripture says, My devotion to your household God burns in me like a fire. The Jewish authorities came back at him with a question. What miracle did you perform to show us that you have the right to do this? Tear down this temple. And in three days I will build it again. Are you going to build it again in three days? It has taken 46 years to build this temple. But the temple Jesus was speaking about was his body. So first a little background. You need to know that that the temple area there up on the Temple Mount had three courtyards. How many courtyards? Three. three courtyards. The first courtyard was built right around the temple area. And it was it was it had a uh, sacrificial fire in the area and lampstands. And that was called the courtyard of the men. Because in that place, that's the place where only Jewish men could come to pray and offer sacrifices. And right out sort of in front of the temple, there was a there was this sort of portico, this 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 uh, wall, and, and there were pillars, and that led to an outer court from the first court. And that court wrapped around the first court, that second court, and it was where Jewish women could come and pray and offer their worship. That court was called the, the courtyard of the... See, they were so creative. So the first court was called the courtyard of men, and then the second courtyard around it was called the courtyard of women. And it was for Jewish men and Jewish women. And you went through another wall and portico with, with, with pillars, and you came to a quite a large courtyard, the third courtyard. And, and it was the courtyard where proselytes, people who were, were friends of God, people who weren't Jewish or weren't Jewish yet, they could come to that place. They couldn't go into the courtyard of the women. They couldn't go into the courtyard of the men. They could only be in the outer court, the third court, around the temple. It was in that courtyard in the courtyard of the Gentiles, as it was called, that the tables stood for the money changes. So you brought your dollars or your kroner or your German marks when you came on pilgrimage and you could change your money into the temple money and then make your offerings. Have you ever gone to a baseball game and, and bought um, food outside the baseball stadium because you didn't want to pay the prices for the Cracker Jacks on the inside and the peanuts on the inside. So you bought your peanuts and your Cracker Jack on the outside. Anybody ever do that? I do that all the time. I stop like right about a block away because, you know, a half a block away is a dollar or more. So I buy my peanuts just far enough away that I don't have to pay. Well, here's what they did. If you bought, brought your own turtle dove or your own lamb for sacrifice, they would take a look at it and say, oh, sorry, this is unclean. This is not good enough for an offering to God. So you're going to have to buy your animals from the temple. Okay? No peanuts from the outside. Okay? So guess where they sold the animals? They changed the money so you could make your offering, and they also changed the money so you could buy the animals that had already been approved for sacrifice. And the animals were there, the, the goats and, the, and the, the lambs and the turtle doves. Now just imagine, just imagine that you're going to worship in a new church. You haven't been there before. And when you arrive, you're told that you can't go into the sanctuary. That's just for the... Lutheran men and the Lutheran women who belong to this church. But you're welcome to worship in the narthex, in the gathering space of the church. Okay? Seems like they got video screens up there so you can see like what's going on. They got a great sound system. But the problem is, out there in the gathering space, in the narthex, they are, well, it's kind of like going to the monkey house. Okay? The monkeys are out there on the one side, and then the elephants are on the other side. Woo! You know, and, on side. And, they, and they're selling raffle tickets right there. And then 
they're auctioning off a quilt over here, and they're selling stuff for third world uh, crafts over here, and it smells like the zoo, and all of this noise is going on, and they, and the, and they say, do feel free to worship here. That's what was going on. Jesus arrives after they have sung Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. And he walks into the courtyard of the Gentiles, these folks who are seeking after God, they're friends of God, and they are worshiping literally in the zoo. And in all the noise. And Jesus was fiery and passionate about all people, not just Jewish people, but all people. And so he starts knocking over the tables, and the coins and the turtle doves go flying, and the lambs and the goats and the rams are running around. My father's house is meant to be a house of prayer, and you've turned it into this what? Zoo and den of thieves. Hosanna, Hosanna. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord with fire love, salty love that gets in your face. It must have been something meeting Jesus that day. Jesus loves me, this I know, tips my tables <laughs> over. So, Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. But how, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can it be restored? Huh? <coughs> It is no longer good for anything, but it's thrown out and trampled under feet. Ah, now we're to it. How does salt lose its saltiness? This salt has been out all day long. Yep. That's, that's pretty salty. <laughs> this salt is... That's salty. Jesus says, 
You are the salt of the earth, but salt that's lost its capacity to reflect the heat is no longer really good for much of anything. And so it's thrown out. You and I, you and I are meant to reflect the passionate heat of a loving God. Because Jesus is a fiery Savior. He was passionate about loving all people. We are salt, meant to reflect that fiery love. One time Jesus was overlooking Jerusalem. He was coming into town and it says that he cried out. They cried out. He cried over Jerusalem. He says, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to them. How often I have desired to gather you like a hen gathers her brood. But you would not. You can hear his passionate and powerful love for the whole people of Jerusalem, for all of us. He cries out when we push God away. I would love you to the very end of the age. You would not. And he still loves us. There are five times, five times in the Gospel of Matthew and Mark where it says Jesus had compassion on people. Now, think about the word compassion. What does that mean? Compassion means, oh, I really feel strongly for you. Yeah? Is that what compassion means? Would you say? What would you say compassion means? English majors? Oh, Chris left. <laughs> huh? Empathy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, empathy. Sympathy. Compassion. The heart, my heart goes out to you. I have compassion. Now, I need to tell you the Greek word for, com for compassion is splatnitsome. Everybody say it. Splatnitsome. It literally means your bowels are twisted. <laughs> Jesus sees people and he has his bowels twisted. That's what the Greek means. I'm just, I'm just saying. That doesn't sound like empathy, does it? It doesn't sound, I really feel for you. Jesus saw people suffering and had twisted his stomach. Jesus saw people who were sheep without a shepherd, and it made him sick to his stomach. It turned his stomach, and then he didn't just let it go. He acted. That's God's love. It is fiery, and it is passionate, and it is obsessed. God's love. With our lives. With the lives of all humanity. You are the salt of the earth. You reflect the heat of a fiery God. Salty love is compassionate and powerful. My friend called me up to tell me the truth, not because he wanted to hurt me, but because he was salt in my life. And he stayed there. He didn't just say the words to me and then leave. He stayed there to get my reaction, to take the heat, because he is salt. I'd like to shake a little bit more salt on the salt shaker. Let's have a little bit more Simon Birch. Simon's best friend, was, his name was Joe, and Joe's mom was salt. She had a passionate love for Simon, and she protected him at every opportunity. Now, the Sunday school teacher just had it out for Simon. For some reason, she just... Well, Simon just sat on her last nerve. So, let's walk. Poor Simon. Didn't your mother ever teach you how to keep quiet during mass? What am I saying? Of course she didn't. Your parents don't go to church, do they, Simon? 
See, that's because they don't belong here. And neither do you. Speaking out of turn, disrupting the class, telling the other children that, that God has a special plan for you. What kind of nonsense is that? And what kind of nonsense is this? Come on, Sasha, no. Wait, I was, I was, I was teaching him a lesson. What lesson is that? Humiliation? Oh, man, so false. This is all my fault. Hey, don't take all the credit, she's my mom. <laughs> Children is some kind of hero that is, is God's instrument. And who's to say he isn't? Who do you think we need to find? Good question. Miss Mimi's meaner. She's a smoker. Her mom got out last year. We can have you done. It frightens the other children. Oh, I think it's you that frightens Miss Lee. What? Why would I be frightened of little Simon Birch? Because that child has more faith than you'll ever know. And when he sees people who have been victims of injustice, well, Pastor Bill burns bright. He is fiery. Now, I have to say that sometimes he is hard to be around. He is so passionate, he is so uncompromising, and yet I am drawn to God's love in the fire of his love. It makes him loud and it makes him bold, he is a prophetic salt. He holds the fiery heat of God's love and of God's will and of God's determination for justice. He is salt and he reflects the heat. He is salt and he feels love in his belly. So I say to you, be salt. The kind of salt that reflects the fiery love of God. Be salt, be passionate. Be compassionate. I don't mean empathetic. That's good. Yeah. Your heart going out to somebody, that's good too. But be compassionate. Be uncompromising when you see someone being treated contrary to God's will. Be salty salt. Be salty salt when you see someone being abused. Victim of a bully. Victim of his injustice. Be salty salt when you see someone abusing themselves. Because you are. You are the salt for the earth. I am the salt. You are the salt of the earth. I am the salt of the earth. Pour it out. Turn it out. Turn it out. 